And so welcome back also to the morning immersion. This week I'm focusing on the practice of metta or maya tree. So it's the third of the Brahma Viharas. Karuna is the first, Mudita is the second, and then metta or maya tree, which means loving kindness, to offer prayers of loving kindness, particularly, specifically towards people who are causing harm. So each of the Brahma Viharas is directed towards a particular group of people or a particular sort of circumstance, like compassion is offered towards those who are suffering. Mudita is offered towards those who are having a beneficial circumstance. They're having a good fortune or having auspicious experiences. And then loving kindness is offered towards people who are causing harm, towards you or towards others. And a reminder that each of the Brahma Viharas are for freeing our hearts, not to be in the contraction or the, the pain of the near enemies or the far enemies. The fourth Brahma Vihara, by the way, Upekshanam, is directed towards those circumstances that just can't be reconciled. Equanimity for that which can't be explained. Equanimity for whatever is rising in the ocean of life, seeing like a, a larger view, but really being with equanimity is not an aloof, detached stance. That's actually called the near enemy of equanimity. As we get into equanimity, I'll talk more about both its near enemy and its far enemy. Yesterday, I spoke about the near enemy of mudita, excuse me, the near enemy of maitri or metta, which is loving kindness. The near enemy of that is attachment. So really wanting something, really being attached to a person being different or a part of yourself being different. This attachment is also the opposite of varagyam. So we know that the Brahma Viharas, we need to have these river banks of abhyasa, dedication, and varagyam, non-attachment or letting go. In this regard, let's get underway, and we're going to focus on the third chakra again this morning for our practice. I will play the harmonium as lightly as I can so I can get these guys used to it. <laughs> And we'll just chant one time through, so I'm limiting their exposure to the harmonium, which is quite a bit louder here than it is for you there. That's my water glass. <laughs> Let's put that up here. Okay. You have a huge water bowl in the other room. I saw you drinking from it already today. There you go. Okay, please take a comfortable seat. And let's get underway with the chanting so we can see how they respond and then bring them some ease. Bring your palms to your heart, please. When they are practice, provide us with the protection from our own mental habits, those that are inauspicious. May it give us the nourishment that we need. May it also build our stamina or vigor for when that's needed. May we overcome tamas, the darkness. May we experience the qualities of patience or fortitude or stamina and the absence of impatience or intolerance. Mm Yeah. 
Your exhale, you may bow your head to your heart. Release your hands, open your eyes. So Cumberbund did okay with the sound and uh, Ayla was hiding, now she's coming back. You can't see in here that there's an elliptical to the side of this room and that's where they hide behind. <laughs> Okay, so I like to begin the practice with some pranayama to direct us toward the third chakra. And last week when we were practicing, I just want to see what this says. Hmm, yeah, that's interesting. I'll have to take a look at it. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, I don't have echo cancellation turned on, so. Uh, let me just check if there is a setting that somebody else was using this yesterday. Let's see what there is. Okay, well, we'll see how it goes. Thank you for the input. I'm still refining the system. Um, so I want to start with some pranayama, where last week we were beginning to understand the experience of how do, you, how do you come into the exhale pause, which becomes the exhale suspension, which becomes Uddiyana Bandha. And that starts at the pelvic floor and then goes through the second chakra and does come up to the third. I had a question, a really good question on Saturday, or rather Sunday, excuse me, at Yoga on Yam Hill. One of the in-person students there asked me after class, well, in terms of the chakras, does the light I was talking about, does, he was saying, does it go then like forward? Is the light shining forward? And I said, oh no, the chakras are a vertical system. It's, there's a circumferential nature to each of the chakras. So it's like a, an orb of energy and it radiates in each direction, but the journey of the chakras is vertical. So then he asked me, is it both up and down then? You know, is it going down? Is it going up? And as I understand it in the chakra system, because we're mapping our evolution, it's going up. If that if we get stuck in the lower three chakras, as I was saying this past summer in our immersion, we end up in the samsara, the realms of human suffering, the repetition of suffering, suffering, suffering. So the journey is one that goes up. And if you think about the Uddiyana Bandha is pelvic floor and then second chakra, and it's bringing energy up into the third chakra. Uddiyana means flying upwards. So we, we're trying to give ourselves the strength or the fortitude to go upwards from the third to the fourth. And here in the fourth chakra is the realm of the Brahma Viharas. So please come to kneeling. We also call this Vajrasana. We started here yesterday as well. A reminder that when you're kneeling, yes, you have less blood supply down the legs, um, hips, knees, and feet. So we're going to focus in this region of the body. Rest your hands in your lap. And begin your ujjayi breath, just sensing for right now. In the ujjayi breath, can you make the inhale smooth, equal to the exhale, which is also smooth? So you're kind of getting the information of the present moment in relationship with your body. 
possible that you're having the influence of last night's sleep, yesterday's food, this morning's mental activities, and that all of that, it does have an influence in the body. Okay, now interlace your fingers, point the heels of the hands straight down. And as you inhale, sweep your arms forward while broadening the back of the body. When you get up above the shoulders, begin to make a little back bend in the heart, look up. Exhale, sweep the arms wide, bow forward to child's pose with your hands at the small of your back. Inhale, take the arms wide, rise all the way up, palms facing up, raise the energy up. Exhale, place that in your heart. Interlace the fingers, inhale, ujjayi, broaden the back of your body as your arms come forward, as your arms go higher than your shoulders, open the chest, heart, and throat. Exhale, ujjayi breath. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, down to the heart, and your gaze can come to the tips of your fingers. So the eyes are also following the process. This one more time. Exhale, switch which hand is on top when you get to the small of your back. And then inhale, rising up. Bring your gaze up to meet your hands as they meet. And exhale, come down so your gaze is at the tip of your fingers. Momentarily close your eyes and look back on the quality of your concentration over the last couple of moments. Now we're gonna take this upright. So inhale, clasp the hands, rise up on your high knees. When you exhale, take the arms wide, come down to child's pose, turn your head to your right. Inhale, rise up, lift your gaze up to see your hands as they meet. Exhale, hands to the heart. Clasp your fingers, inhale to go up. Exhale, arms wide as you come down to a child's pose, turn your gaze to your left. Inhale, rise, so you're synchronizing your breath, your body and your gaze. Exhale, Anjali Mudra Vajrasana. Again, once more. Notice again the quality of your synchronizing and your concentration. So though the poses might feel simple to you, turn your head to the right in child's pose. Hopefully the poses do feel simple so you have the extra space in your mind to practice the art of concentration. This is one way you express your abhyasa the word for concentration is dharana. Last one going up. And come down to Vajrasana, hands in Anjali Mudra, gaze at your fingertips. And then gaze into your heart, close the eyes. And drop your hands down to the mudra for the third chakra. So that's where you, you take the two thumbs like this and place like an arrow. And the word is ram, R-A-M. Ram, 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 ram. Long Ujjayi inhale. Ram, 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 Ram. 
Long, smooth inhale. Ram, 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 ram. Long inhale. Ram, 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 ram. Rest your hands in your lap and notice again the quality of your concentration. Sometimes after chanting, the breath is really imperceptible. There can be a stillness that comes. Place your hands on the floor in front of you. So we're gonna pick up the prostration practice from yesterday. Place your hands, bow your forehead, lift your hips, curl your toes under, and push up into Uttanasana. Notice the circulation coming down your legs. Return to the Ujjayi breath. Shift your hands to your hips and rise up to standing. Okay, so in the prostration practice, a reminder that we are using this to warm up the whole spine. Hi, you guys. Don't chew on the cords, please. We're using it to warm up the whole spine and we're gonna be starting as if we're, we've just stepped over the sill of a temple. We're coming into that temple. And then we have this prostration. Now, I've said this before that actually the prostrations that you would see, like in Bodhgaya, where they're outdoors, the monks are on these boards that slide because there's only so much space for all those monks to be there. But actually the prostrations would be going around a temple and you can sometimes see that. there will be some visiting monks who are doing the prostrations around the circumference of the temple even going up the stairs and down the stairs. It's quite a dedication. So we're doing ours here as if we, we don't have that far to travel. Like I have a door right there, I would hit my head eventually, or you would I would disappear from your screen. So we're gonna be doing it where you go down, forward, and then you return back. Okay, so join your palms together. Inhale, raise the hands up like an arrow. Exhale, hands to your heart, bow over your legs. This is called Uttanasana. Inhale your heart forward, place your hands on the floor. Exhale over the toes, down to your knees, touch your forehead. Inhale Vajrasana, raise the arms up like an arrow. Exhale, bow forward. This is not part of the traditional prostration that you would see in Bodh Gaya, but it is a prostration pose right there. Place your palms, inhale, roll your spine forward to cow pose. Exhale, inchworm pose. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, inchworm, it's also called knees, chest, and chin. Inhale, cow pose. 
Exhale, cat pose becomes child's pose. Join your palms together like an arrow. Inhale, raise up. Exhale, prostration, pranam, hands down, forehead, toes under. Inhale, Uttanasana. Exhale for the deeper bow in your Uttanasana. Palms forward, inhale, rise up. Little back bend there, and then hands to the heart. Gaze at your fingertips. So one of the aims is also to build some heat. Let's inhale, raise this arrow upwards. Exhale to your heart and down to Uttanasana with the legs. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Pranam. Come over the toes, touch the knees down, bow your forehead. It's really your hairline. And then inhale, raising up like an arrow. Put your tailbone broad in the back waist, but open the heart. Exhale, bow forward. Do your best to keep your hips on your heels. Palms flat. Inhale, cat to cow. Bow your heart. Cobra. Heart bow. Cow pose. Cat pose becomes child's pose. Palms together like an arrow. Inhale, rise up. And exhale, hands to the floor, forehead bows. Curl your toes under. Push up, Uttanasana. Exhale, deep bow to the legs. Inhale your arrow forward as you rise up, come into a standing back bend. And then exhale to your heart. Pause with your gaze in towards your heart. Notice the quality of your concentration. Drop down to the third chakra where we have to build our concentration and discernment. Otherwise, we get stuck in the th first three chakras circling around that, which we call samsara, the cycles of suffering. Okay, let's transition it to include downward dog, and we'll be moving towards Surya Namaskar. So inhale the arrow forward and up. This is a standing back bend, it's okay. For the hips to come in line with your toes, but not much further forward than that. And then exhale, hands to your heart. I have a kitten on my toes. I know you can't see it, but this right there. Hi, Cumberbun. Hi. Inhale, glide your heart forward. And then exhale, place the hands without squishing the kitten. Come down to your pranam. Vajrasana. Okay, I am not sitting on the kitten. Please don't be concerned. And exhale, bow forward. <laughs> Inhale, cat to cow. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. Inhale to plank pose. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Cobra Pose. Exhale, Inchworm Pose. Cow Pose. And Cat Pose becomes Child's Pose. Palms together, raise up.
Pranam, place your hands, bow your head, curl your toes under. Inhale, Uttanasana legs. And exhale, deeply bow. Inhale, raise your arms forward, rise up, root your tailbone, standing back bend. And exhale, hands to your heart. Again, now we're going to build on it. I don't know, <laughs> Cumberbund is on my toes again. I don't think you, oh, maybe you can see, yeah. So, hi there. You're very comfortable in the yoga room. <laughs> Inhale, rise up. Exhale to the heart, to the floor. Ujjayi, inhale, come forward. Exhale, place your hands, come over your toes, knees down, forehead down. Inhale, rise up, here's your arrow. Exhale. Hi. Inhale, cat to cow. Okay, exhale, downward facing dog pose. Please make the hands secure on the floor. And as you inhale, raise your right leg high, Ekapada, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then exhale, step your right foot forward between your hands. <laughs> Touch your left knee down, Anjane Asana. Please don't bite my toes. <laughs> and exhale. Now touch the floor and see if you can transition from here into your inchworm pose. It's a, it's a classical transition. And then cobra. And then inchworm. Cow pose. <laughs> Exhale, downward dog pose. Inhale, raise your left leg high. And exhale, left foot forward between your hands. Touch the right knee down. Rise up, Anjane Asana. Exhale, bow forward as you touch the floor. Try it again. You're going to transition right to inchworm pose without stepping on your kitten. And then inhale, cobra. Exhale, inchworm. Cow pose. Cat pose. Back to child's pose. Inhale, raise your arrow high. <laughs> Exhale, prostration. Inhale, Uttanasana legs. <laughs> and then exhale, Uttanasana. Raise the arrow forward. And hands to the heart. So notice where your mind was. Where did it go? Was it circumnavigating your thoughts, the temple, or staying with concentration? Where did your mind go? So for anyone who's new to class in the last uh, week or so, who's new to me, I just had a hip replacement on September 2nd. So it's not yet even eight weeks. So the transitions that we're making, you might see it as a little bit awkward for me. I'm looking at you in my monitor, from the monitor to the mirror to me. So they might look a little bit awkward, but this is the first day that I've supported myself on my left leg in one-legged dog pose, ekapada, Adho Mukha Svanasana. We're going to go through it again, and I welcome you to have your own awkward. <laughs> it's okay. It may be there. Maybe we're smoothing it out in time. So please join your hands. This is the last one from the prostration. Energize your legs. 
Use the ujjayi breath, hands forward and up. Exhale down to the heart and to the floor. Hi, Cumberbun. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, prostration. Inhale, raise the arrow high. Exhale, pranam, one of the variations of pranam. Inhale, cat to cow. Okay, exhale, downward facing dog pose. Inhale, raise your right leg high. Exhale, right foot forward between your hands. Left knee down. Inhale, glide up. Anjane Asana. Make the hands like an arrow, please. Lift up, look up, stay several breath cycles. Do not hammock into the right hip, so keep the right hamstring, right hip, pelvic floor, and lower belly toned. Yeah. And then exhale, hands to the heart, touch the floor, and transition to inchworm pose. You might inhale to a moment of plank on your way down. Exhale, inchworm. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, inchworm. Inhale, cow pose. Downward facing dog pose. Inhale, raise your left leg high, Ekapada, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And exhale, left foot forward, right knee down. Come into your Anjane Asana. Hook the thumbs like an arrow again, raise up. Listen to the quality of the breath and let the breath help you to make the prudent decisions with your body. How far up to reach, how not to hammock the hips down towards your left heel. And when you exhale, then hands to your heart and to the floor and step into inchworm pose. Inhale to cobra. Exhale, inchworm. Inhale, cow pose. And exhale, cat becomes child's pose. Bring the palms together like an arrow. And pause right here. Drop your hips back to your heels. Raise your arms up like an arrow. Come to Vajrasana. And then exhale, hands to your heart. Anjali Mudra. Notice your body temperature, your heart rate but also behind those activations, notice the quality of your mind. Where has it been during the prostration? This kind of namaskar. What are you learning about your mind? Your mind patterns. And then please release your hands to your lap and come up to the jazz dance warm up pose. It's a standing position, just one moment. Uh, 
I expect that these kittens will do just what they're doing right now. <laughs> so take your jazz dance warm-up pose, please. Excuse me, honey. Come on down, Marcus. I did trim all of their nails. Um, so if you see them climbing my leg, you don't have to have any like mirror neurons for getting scratched to bits. <laughs> their nails have been trimmed. Okay, press out with the inner thighs. Straighten your arms so that actually you are having the torso hang down a bit. And then your gaze can go towards the floor in front of you, like from the two feet to a point ahead of you as an equilateral triangle. And come into the ujjayi breath. Give special attention to how the inhale touches the back hemisphere of the pelvic floor, and then the back and sides of your waist and up into your heart. And special focus for how the exhale begins at the front hemisphere of the pelvic floor and comes up the front of your spine. Now start noticing at the inhale, at the top, you can have this moment of pausing as if the inhale muscles were still inhaling, but no more air is coming. Same thing at the bottom of the exhale, a sense that the exhale is continuing, but no more breath is leaving. And that's the first hint of how you can feel the pause of inhale and exhale before it ever becomes a suspension. Let's inhale, rise up to standing. Make your feet parallel, please. And come down to Prasarata Padottanasana, which is a standing forward bend. We're gonna walk the hands for, that's my water glass. <laughs> it's still my water glass. You're gonna walk the hands forward, please, so that the um, equilateral triangle is from your feet, like a pyramid, out to your fingers. And with the inhalation, again, watch the process at the top of the inhale, like you're still inhaling, but no more breath is coming. At the bottom of the exhale, I'd like you to continue as if you're exhaling, but no more breath is leaving. But this time, I'd like you to also sense that squeeze that you make in the lower belly to complete the exhale. Release that squeeze slowly enough that you feel the inhale begins really smoothly. The moment where the breath turns around from the exhale to the exhale pause to the inhale is a really key place to increase your concentration and your elegance. And please walk your hands back towards your feet, up to your hips, and rise up to standing. And let's go heel-toe, heel-toe into horse stance pose. And horse stance is about as wide as your yoga mat with the knees bent, and you're sitting in your pelvis. Place your hands on your knees, again with the arms straight. So now when you press down with the hands against the arms, as the exhale gets more and more complete, I'm going to invite you to make the arms a little bit stronger. So you're activating certain outer body muscles to help the exhale. At the end of the exhale, when you've squeezed the belly, then I'm gonna ask you to totally relax the exhale muscles and just feel what happens to the inner um, thoraco-abdominal muscles, what happens to the suction that's inside. And then you have to release that suction before you're gasping. Don't add anything to the suction right now. I just want you to experience what that particular part of this practice is like. So smooth inhale, back of the body primarily. And 
And a long and patient exhale. Just taking your time, toning the inner body from the outer body to the inner as you exhale, like you're squeezing a sponge. At the end of the exhale, without inhaling, completely relax the exhale muscles and notice the suction at the pelvic floor and the inner belly. Then tone the front belly before you inhale. And exhale like a sigh. We'll try it again. So when you're in that suction moment, the ex external abdominal muscles do kind of fall forward. So if you felt that, that is okay. And then inside the body, there's the suction, but the outer body looks like the belly just relaxed like a cow in a field. I like to say, let the belly utterly hang out right there because the inner belly is the suction, not the outer belly. So let's inhale smoothly, please. Exhale slowly, patiently, but completely. Squeeze the breath out, and then without inhaling, totally relax the exhale muscles. Then tone the abdomen, and then inhale. And exhale, let's come down like a rag doll. You can make the feet parallel if that's more comfortable for your hips and knees and come down like a rag doll for a few moments. So you're just learning the steps, the like micro steps of Uddiyana Bandha. And please bring your hands to your knees and rise up to stand. So I wanted to have this little pause right there. Come into mountain pose now and see if you can sense how organized is your energy as a result of prostrations and then this Uddiyana Bandha. What's happening now in the energy field of your body? Where do you feel that energy is distributed? Is there any place where it might be stagnant or excessive? And then please open your eyes and I'd like you to have a block for the next part of your practice. So we say about each of the chakras that there's different things that are needed. Like at the second chakra, I was talking for the last couple of weeks, we have Apanavayu flowing down, Pranavayu coming up. It's like an exchange center just for those two primary, two primary pranas. Apana and prana are both forms of prana. The one that goes down is for elimination. The one that comes up is for inspiration or the, this upward evolution. At the third chakra, we have something called Samana Vayu. And that is the energy that contracts. It breaks down large food particles into small food particles and then helps you to digest that. So it's a contracting energy at the fire center, the third chakra. And then it sends the food downstream. But the fire, if it does that well, is then not preoccupied with food, and it helps them to burn the seeds of the mind, the unhelpful seeds of the mind. And from this fire, it lights up the heart from underneath. Okay, so one of the qualities we say with the third chakra is the quality of determination. So place your feet in the distance that you would use for a pose called Parsvottanasana, which is a standing forward bend that looks a bit like this. So I'm gonna ask for that distance because it's shorter than your crescent lunge. It's not the longest stride that you would have on your mat. And it's because I want you to sense the pose called Virabhadrasana one as a standing back bend pose. It's not like how deep can the hips be in this pose, but how can the legs support this upward movement in the body? So take this block in your hands, please. Palms around the block like this. And tone both legs so they're currently strong and also straight. Root your tailbone down. Inhale, raise this block up overhead. Lift your gaze slightly above the horizon. 
And then as you exhale, take this little back bend in the heart and secure it. So the next exhale, you're gonna bend your right knee into what you would think of as warrior one, like a shorter stride than you might normally use. Really focus on the upward reach of the pose and the back bend of the heart. Now, as you're going up in this back bend, root your left heel down, drive the tailbone down and forward. You may sense your left hip flexors. And then inhale, straighten your right leg, lower your arms, turn to center, hold the block in one hand. And go the other way. So in this, in my room here, when I'm looking this way, I get to see Varanasi, the Himalayas, and Tirvanamalai. So it's quite inspiring. When I go this way, I'm looking at the temple in Kathmandu, the prayer wheels in Bodh Gaya, the candles here in a place that I forgot the name of. And this is a photograph from Karen. It's from the temple in Kathmandu. It's me actually turning the prayer wheels on that temple. So also inspiring. Take your palms around the block again, energize both legs, make a, a big commitment to the back leg. Don't be too consumed about how deep the front leg goes. Raise up into your back bend. So the standing back bend at present should not feel like it's compromising your lower back. From your right heel like a crescent up into your fingertips. And then exhale and bend your left knee. It's coming into the shape we call warrior one. You might notice your right hip flexors. Use the block to squeeze the hands to support the shoulder blades, to support your heart. The heart is lit up from beneath at the third chakra, the fire that is there. And that fire doesn't have to be a roaring, blazing brush fire. It just needs to be enough light, enough determination to reach upwards. And then exhale, straighten both legs, lower your arms. Turn to center. And again, relax a moment. Okay, set the block down, keep it nearby, turn to your right. And I think I'm calling this your right, so yeah, turn to your right. Might look like it's my left, it's my right. Reach back and clasp your hands. Roll the shoulders back. And again, place yourself in the back leg, in your uh, left leg. Root your heel and your toes. Energize your left leg, including your left butt. Come up to a back bend. Squeeze the shoulders back as you bend your right knee. Keep the back leg very stable. So as your shoulders squeeze back, the heart is a high point in the upper body. Of course, you have your shoulders and your head. And then inhale, raise your head, your shoulders you can reach back, raise the arms. Maybe they're gonna be moving towards a place that's parallel to the floor. And then exhale and keeping the hands clasped, bow over your right thigh, release the weight of your head. This is called the humble warrior pose. As you're coming down to the inside of the right thigh, keep your right hip centered. It's not gonna sashay out to the right. Bring your torso down to the inner edge of your thigh rather than moving your hip or your knee out to the side. And then root your right heel, use your right hamstring and hip, rise up and release the clasp of the hands. 
turn to center. Don't step on the tail of the cat. precious kitten tail. Okay, notice the warmth going down the arms. You're releasing some what we might call excess heat or releasing some of the residue of stress in the body. Turn your feet to the left. Hi, you guys. Reach back and clasp your hands. Try changing the interlace of the fingers by one digit so it might feel a little bit strange. Take the arms back, root your tailbone and your right heel. The back bend is in the heart. And then bend your left knee. And think less about how deeply forward you're coming and more about how the right heel stays grounded and your heart lifted. And then inhale, raise your gaze forward, squeeze the shoulders back, raise your arms as if they're gonna go to parallel. And then bow over your left leg. Come down thoughtfully to the upper inner left thigh with your torso. And let the torso and the head bow down towards the floor. It's past what my body can do with my recent hip replacement, so I will admire you in your practice. Good, so keeping the left hip from sashing out to the side, use your left hamstring and roll yourself back up to standing, and then release the clasp of your hands, turn to center, and come down It's a short stride Prasarata Padottanasana, if possible, place a block or two if you need to for your head. So the third chakra is the fire element, but we're looking really to balance the fire in the body, not to overuse it, not to underuse it, not to misuse it. Please transition down to Vajrasana. Back down to kneeling. Watch out for the tails. And you can rest your hands in your lap. Now I'd like you to take yourself onto your back, please, with a block between your knees. This is a core strengthening practice, what we're going to be doing. So with the block between the knees, what you can do is start in this basic position familiar to all of you. Open the arms in a T-shape that's also familiar. Bring the knees up to your chest. Uh, let's go to 90 90 let me clarify that just bring your knees up to 90 degrees and with the inhale take the lower half of the sacrum down towards the floor with your exhale roll to the middle and then the top of your sacrum with the inhale roll to the base of the sacrum And then exhale, roll middle to upper. And do that three times more with your breath cycle. So the process is really directed by your breath and that is very important. That movement in the pelvis is also synchronized with the length of your breath. And the next time that you exhale and the lower 
pelvis and lower back are on the floor. So the tailbone will be lifted from the floor and the lower part of the sacrum not touching, but you can feel the back of the ilium bones, the top of the sacrum, the lumbar spine. From this place now, raise your left hip up and rotate your knees over to the right. And don't go all the way down, please. Keep using your inner core to support the weight of your legs. Look over at the knees and check that they're equal so you don't have your left knee shorter than your right knee. So without the knees touching the floor, you have to maintain some inter-abdominal support and also the breath. Now with your exhale, start rolling the diaphragm back to the floor and then the upper lumbar, mid lumbar, now towards the base of the lumbar spine, right SI joint, center of the sacrum, press into the left SI joint, using your exhale, raise your right hip up and come over towards your left side. So you're coming down, not all the way. In the process of coming down, keep the knees equal, so look over at them and check that the knees are equal. You may have to lengthen your right thigh towards its own knee. And then rolling back slowly, so you're gonna notice the inner belly. Don't just use leverage or spit and grit, please, as I like to say, but roll the inner belly. So you've got now the diaphragm coming back to the floor floor, left kidney, and then the left side of the lower back, upper lumbar, mid lumbar, lower lumbar, the center of the sacrum, and then touch your feet down to the floor. <clears throat> Excuse me, hi you guys. <laughs> and stretch out to your Shavasana. So we came back down to the center of the pelvis purposely there. So now I'd like you to imagine that from the center of the second chakra, this thing we call your vitality is being recalibrated down the legs, up the torso, that your body intelligence quite knows what to do. So to balance the fire in the body, we actually need it to have its purpose and not to be overpurposed or exploited. We also need the water element, which is the second chakra. And we want that vitality to be distributed equally so there's no sort of excess or stagnation in the body. So coming into awareness of your body, releasing the physical practice and coming to the stillness. Start to imagine that in the right-sized fire of the solar plexus, you're able to kind of burn these little attachments that would keep you from the clear expression of loving kindness. These are the little places in life where you find yourself clutching or clinging or contracting. So you could imagine this is a place where like the seed of self doubt, which is a form of contraction. That seed is just gently being burned in the fire, so it won't be able to be planted quite so often. The seed of judgment. Mental judgment. Towards other or self. The seed of arrogance, thinking that you are right or that your way is right.
the mental seat of overindulgence. So over consuming, over indulging. The mental seed of negligence to yourself that gives rise to the near enemies and the far enemies. In burning those seeds, imagine a heart that becomes more and more radiant, content, spacious. The Brahma Viharas would naturally shine through. The fire, may a right size fire burning the seeds. The luminosity of the heart. Invite your mind to be very still. Again, deeply relax and imagine those seeds that are burned. They cannot sprout again, even when planted in ideal soil. Keeping the mind and your heart really relaxed and without unnecessary disturbance to your body. Please wiggle your toes. And then bend your knees. Roll to your side. Use both hands to come up to sitting. Mm -hmm. 
Let's take a seat wherever your kittens will let you. They're actually not my kittens anymore. They're going to get to go to their new homes at the end of the week. So I'll just enjoy and keep mentoring them to be good family members when they get to their new place. But please take your comfortable seat. I don't know why the light changes so much, but I'll research that too later, another time. Okay, rest your hands in your lap, please. Let's do palms face up like this. Close your eyes and bring your attention down to the third chakra, the center for fire. If you imagine that those seeds are being burned, you are much less likely to be a source of harm to others. Not only do we want to practice metta or mayatri to free our hearts from the pain we might have experienced from others or that they have experienced from a third person that we're giving prayer to, we also want to sense that we are becoming less and less likely to be a source of harm for others. So imagining that fire, it burns the seeds that cause us to be less than our best self. So one of the seeds is overindulgence, impulsivity, neglecting ourselves or our practice, self-doubt and vacillation. feeling that we are farther along than we are, misperceiving ourselves, or we could say arrogance. The seeds of instability or inconsistency. You please raise your hands to the third chakra. The list I'm working from there is, by the way, called the, the hindrances, the obstacles. And in the Yoga Sutras, that list precedes the Brahma Viharas. So the Brahma Viharas are to help us with those obstacles, the um, antaras. The word is Ram, R-A-M. Three slow and three fast. Ram, 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 Ram.
Ram 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 Raise your hands to your heart and just rest there. May we not succumb to illness nor perpetuate the causes of illness in ourselves. May we not succumb to apathy or resignation, nor self doubt or vacillation. May we not succumb to overindulgence, overdoing, overconsuming. May we not find ourselves misperceiving our progress, succumbing to arrogance. May we not succumb to instability or inconsistency. May we not allow ourselves to regress down the mountain path of our progress as yogis. May we not neglect ourselves nor our practices. May we have loving kindness towards the parts of us that do meddle with those obstacles. So may we be free from unnecessary suffering even caused by ourselves. May we be free from unnecessary pain. May we experience harmony and ease. May this be so for everyone everywhere. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Thank you very much, everyone. Namaste. <laughs> I just opened my eyes to see on the monitor this. <laughs> okay. It's a balance of wrestling and fighting and then soothing each other. Okay, now we're back in the wrestle, but a moment ago, Kambarban was giving some kindness to Ayla. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. <laughs> okay, let me see if you all have any uh, questions or observations from the practice this morning. You can also ask questions about kittens. I won't have all the answers, but you're welcome to do so. Thank you for the chats. I'm just reading them. Okay, about inchworm. Yes. Okay, great. I got a couple inchworm demonstrators here in the Zoom room. I'm looking at Tracy and Carol because they have really good visibility. Um, ask your question, Melody. Please do. Okay. Um, so when coming up from inchworm, I found the only way I can come up is to widen my hands to push up is that is that a loophole is that cheating <laughs> it's actually margaret asking your question so i'm sorry i got your name wrong 
Uh, let me, so I don't know if you can see right now, Peggy, Tracy, and Carol, I can see them all. Would you guys call that cheating? No. No, we would call that wisdom. <laughs> Wise action. So if you had to come up with the hands too narrow, it might be like having a, a wagon, which is a big thing in India, wagons, which uh, like the samskara means a wagon rut, like a deeply grooved rut. So if the wagon wheels were too in for the wagon, it would be unstable. So take it out a slightly bit there and give yourself the strength to press back up. Yes. Um, Mari, thank you for your note. Maybe one of the things, Margaret, that's going to happen in time is that in inchworm pose, let's see, how visible am I? I guess I'm pretty visible here. In the inchworm pose, when we're coming down, we need upper back flexibility like this. There's quite a bit of flexibility required in the upper back for coming down like that. So if we don't have that, sometimes people end up coming down, they feel like they're going to fall on their face because you do need for the chest to come down. It is called knees, chest and chin pose, not just chin pose. <laughs> so, don't just come down to the chin. Don't mush your face. Think of it as a prostration. It's a pranam. Yeah. Tracy says, I find that move hard also. Yeah, it's, it's challenging. That's why I said a couple days ago, the monks are buff. They're very strong. Hi, look who was behind my back. <laughs> Hi, Cumberbun. Margaret can see you from here. Here we are. <laughs> can you see Margaret's house from here? Can you see it? You're not looking at the screen. I can't watch the TV anyway. So, okay, any last questions before we scoot? You wanna scoot up, over? Here you go. Okay, thank you, Izzy. <laughs> okay, this is what, Dennis, this is what your kitty was like before it was your kitty when it was a baby. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know what's going to happen next. There you go. <laughs> okay. All right. I will see the yoga teachers in the training at nine. And um, thank you all for being here and energizing the morning. Maybe not succumb to the obstacles, the nine obstacles. That's what they're called, the nine obstacles. They prevent the Brahma Viharas. Okay. See you guys later. Bye. Loka. <laughs>